All right, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Clubhouse Picks brought to you by Godzilla Wins. I'm your host, Jack Fredericks, editor of GodzillaWins.com. Go to GodzillaWins.com where you can find all of your sports picks and predictions on everything from the NBA to the UFC. Right now, a bunch of Women's World's World Cup previews up and predictions so you can go to godzillawins.com and get all your women's world cup coverage there i'm with my co-host nate perry greatest handicapping caddy west of the rockies nate how you doing oh i'm doing great happy to be back with you man absolutely this week we're going to be talking about the 3m open right on the heels of the open championship this is the pin ultimate um tournament on the pga tour going into the tour championship and the fedex cup standing so or the fedex cup playoffs so we should be in for a great two weeks of golf with some pretty desperate golfers and we'll talk about a couple of those today however one of the first things nate we got to talk about before we start the podcast is that everything on godzillawins.com including this podcast clubhouse picks is for entertainment purposes only if you have a gambling problem please call 1-800-GAMBLER. That's 1-800-426-2537. That's if you live in Colorado, Illinois, Indiana, Louisiana, Maryland, Michigan, Nebraska, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, and Wyoming. Call 800-327-5050 or visit gamblinghelpline-ma.org in Massachusetts. Call 877-G-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY to 467-369 in New York. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP in Arizona, 1-800-522-4700 in Kansas and New Hampshire, 888-789-7777, or visit ccpg.org in Connecticut, 1-800-BETS-OFF in Iowa, or visit opgr.org in Oregon. If you have a gambling problem, do not hesitate to reach out. This is for entertainment purposes only, and in those realms of the entertainment, Nate, one of our key sponsors here is DraftKings. So what you need to do, go to DraftKings.com. If you are in a state where DraftKings is legal, go to DraftKings.com and sign up for a bonus. $5 gets you $150 in free play. All you got to do is go to DraftKings.com and put in the promo code Godzilla. That's promo code Godzilla. So first thing you do, go to DraftKings.com, sign up on an account, put in the promo code Godzilla, turn $5 into $150 in free play. Okay, Nate, we are here. We are talking the 3M Open, but we would be remiss if not to mention Brian Harmon's incredible victory at um, Hoy Lake at the Open Championship. I just want to get your initial reaction here on Brian Harmon um, and that really statement win and maybe some of your thoughts on your season so far as a golf handicapper. Uh, two things that I think we might, want to talk about so i mean brian Harmon. i guess like i mean god we had nate brown on last week or i had nate brown on last week and he you know obviously was all over brian Harmon um and cashed that ticket so it was easy enough for him to see i mean he just never felt to me like a major winning type of guy um but i can remember a lot of weird guys winning the british open you know or the open championship before sort of fading back into having sort of mediocre careers not to say brian Harmon's, you know won several times but it felt weird but i mean he played great he just played smart like the thing about hoy lake is if you just play smart off the tee and you just try to hit it in the fairway and don't try and get too greedy it's a gettable course like tiger showed us that rory showed us that um and it seemed like everyone else was just sort of stubborn um got stubborn and they were in bunkers and and brian Harmon really didn't he was just patient and he putted unbelievably I mean, 58 for 59 from 10 feet in, it's just, that's just silly. And silly. that's the name of the game right there is the putting. There is some stuff strategically that he did um, throughout the course to put himself in the right position so that he's not in those pop bunkers the whole time trying to dig himself out. However, I mean, the dude just putted unbelievable. Sometimes you catch a, pot, a hot putter, and when you do that, you're going to run away with any tournament. Um, I mean, these are those are not easy putts to make inside 10 feet, 58 of 59. Uh, Jason Day mentioned Harmon's what he called bunt drives. Uh, wouldn't uh -huh. weren't um, able to reach the pop bunkers. But I mean, what do you think about that? Like you don't have to use the driver at Hoy Lake. So is that really just more of a, some of these guys who are long off the tee getting greedy and then 
finding those pop bunkers in the middle of fairway or to the right or left of the fairway? I think so. I mean, it's, it sounds like a little bit of sour grapes from Jason day, right? Like Jason day obviously has no, no problem with, with having enough length on the course. So it felt a little bit like, you know, Oh, it's just easy for him because he doesn't hit it far enough, but that's, but like, there's nothing stopping these guys from just hitting driving iron on every hole. I mean, that's what tiger did when he won. So like, from that perspective, it feels like weird. I mean, but like Harmon's always been a pretty good driver of the golf ball. Like he's always been pretty straight anyways. So like, all Jason Day was basically saying was like, this course wasn't so long that it like disqualified a shorter hitter from winning is basically like all I took away from that. And they're just like mad when half the field isn't automatically eliminated. You guys talked about that last week. It, you don't have to be long off the tee. You don't have to be long off the right. tee in any links course because of the way the ball can really bounce. And the fact that sure. you got to be accurate. So you don't land in those pop bunkers. There's a lot of those. And I saw guys find those pop bunkers off to the left and right of the fairway constantly. They put them there for a reason. It's because like when a 80% of the drives end up around that area. So right. on the PGA tour, they just put a pop bunker there to make the course more difficult. You have to play with a little bit more strategy than that. If you're planning on winning a major, like the open championship. Another thing I kind of want to address here are the waggles. Uh, Brian Harmon's yeah. um, waggle gate. Yeah, the yeah, waggle gate, the sort of, I guess, the, the slow play of, of Harmon sitting there waggling. It seemed like the crowd heckled him a bunch, maybe because it takes him forever to hit a golf ball, maybe because nobody knew who he was. And sometimes in the major championships, you want your big stars to win. But what do you make of the, the sort of waggle gate? Um, I mean, I think that like when you go watch golf in person, it's slow. Right. I spent two days in, in Truckee watching the golf tournament last week at the Barracuda Championship. Like when you're just watching it in person, it's slow. There's a lot of downtime, just like playing golf, except you're not even playing. You're just watching. So I think some of it is just people being impatient because it's like it's already slow. And then you're watching a guy you think he's just going to hit and then we can like move on. And then he just stands there forever. So, I mean, it's tough to watch. But this happens with golfers all the time too. Like I can remember Sergio Beth page black, like the New York fans being horrible to him at the U S open uh, because he just made a grip change and he just kept regripping the club 30, 40 times. <laughs> uh, I can remember when Kevin Na like sort of got the yips of this driver and he would just stand over it for like 30 seconds, just completely still because he couldn't move the club head back. So and guys Patrick, like have these things. Yeah. Patrick Cantlay earlier in the year who seemed like he was playing the slowest golf of anyone in the history of golf. Yeah. Like these guys all have their things. Um, and I think that, you know, Harmon's probably a guy that waggles a lot in general, uh, but he's never really experienced major stress. And I'm sure he just fell back on like, this is what I do to relieve tension. And he just did it twice as much as he normally would have. If you are T if you're tied for 50th and it's Sunday morning, and you're sitting out there doing a hundred waggles, like you need to speed it up, like get over yourself and move on. When you are yeah. five strokes ahead in what is the greatest win of your career in a career that may never see another win like this ever, or even close to another win like this, you can waggle as much as you want. If you need take to take time. time, like take the time, you're five strokes ahead. Like you're going to win. That wasn't even like golf that anyone was really anticipating being competitive on Sunday. We kept praying for it to be competitive. And that's some of the heckling was just because he was in such a lead. You just like, well, some of the heckling was Tommy Fleetwood was right there behind him. And he was like the local kid, you know, 25 miles down the road. Well, yeah. And then Rory as well, sort of surging. Uh, and of course, John Rahm, who's extremely popular in Europe as well. You got all these guys kind of, just sniffing around and then you have this guy from Georgia who nobody knows who's taken forever off the tee uh, and has like a five shot lead and he was going to win guys don't lose with a five shot lead these are tour professionals like they're like it would be it would have been such an implosion for him to especially have as smart as he was that. playing like he looks so in control yeah because all he had to do was play par golf if he wanted to and he yeah. faltered a little bit on Saturday, bogey to fir the first couple of holes, and then like caught fire again. So, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, yeah, part of that I think is just some sour grapes. Part of it is trying to root for Fleetwood or McElroy. And then part of it is some of the 
waggling, which, I mean, look, I'm not a huge fan of anyone standing over the ball that long, but when you're leading a major, this is the only time that that's ever going to happen to him probably. So you might as well take the opportunity and just waggle away. Absolutely. So a couple other sort of highlights here, some things that have been the golf world's been talking about as far as the open mm-hmm. goes. Rory McIlroy, we mentioned that. He came up short once again. This is some of the best golf he's ever played the last couple of years, but he can't seem to win a major. Now, let's keep in mind, he just won the Scottish Open. So it's not like the guy's not winning tournaments. He wins tournaments all the time. He just has been coming up short, you know, all these T2s and these majors. What do you make of this? Is this like something that should, is he going to basically, is Rory going to win a major in the next year or so, or is he past the point in his career where that's really an accessible goal? I don't think it's, well, when I saw Brandel Chambly, did you see that headline talking about how Rory's like past his prime at 34? Yeah. yeah. Which is Which like, is like totally ridiculous. Um, the idea of like a golfer is physically past their prime at 34 is absurd. Yeah. So he said, like, you're, no, like, I don't, as a golfer, your prime is like 27 or eight. Like what? Like, I, I mean, these guys win tournaments at 34 all the time. Yeah. Bill won a major of 51. So like everyone can cool it. Um, I mean, I guess like, so no, I don't think that he's like too old to compete. Um, there's nothing about his game that suggests that he's lost any speed or distance, which is, you know, or like that he has the yips or some other thing that you get as an older golfer. Uh, I think he just hasn't, I think it's just the pressure. I really do. I think that it's just mental. Um, I mean, you look at all of his majors, you know, where he's had sort of strong performances in the last few years and it's almost every single one is like mediocre Thursday plays well enough Friday to make the cut and then surges on Saturday or surges on Sunday or both. Like there's just, it's just like these slow starts are just killing him. And to me, that just feels mental. It's like, he can only play at the top of his capabilities when he like, basically like isn't in contention and that's not something that earlier in his career was an issue i mean he is one of the top golfers who has like 54 hole leads it's like tiger and him Mm -hmm. as far as the guys who um have 54 hole leads and and close out tournaments i mean he's used to dominating so you're right i mean the slow start i don't think it has to do with age it could be mental it could just be the stress of, of having to carry the whole tour on his back now that tiger has um, retired and some of these other guys have gone to live and everything else who knows mostly it's just bad luck I think I mean he wins the open probably if Brian Harmon doesn't play the best golf of his life that's just how golf works sometimes you can't catch a guy who's outplaying everybody by five strokes and yeah I mean he closed really strong but then to your point he may not have closed so strong if he was within a shot I mean he Everybody right. plays loose when you're seven shots back. You can be as aggressive as you want. It's a lot harder when you're one shot back or you have a one shot lead. We see that all the time. Those guys falter. I don't, th- I think if Harmon had a one shot lead, he would have fell apart on Sunday. No, no. I mean, there's, that's nothing against Harmon's game. I just, I'm not sure mentally if he would have been able to. Um, yeah. If he's one shot ahead through. of John Rom. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, no way. way. You know, I mean, especially like someone like Rom or McElroy or Fleetwood, you know, they, they would put so much pressure on him. They'd be so aggressive all of a sudden they birdie or they eagle they jump a shot ahead and then you just you know put one in a pop bunk you can't get it out and you're screwed so um i think some of it is just bad luck some of it is just the fact that there's a lot of guys on tour who are playing well and that's the other thing that i really want to point out is that we just have a lot of parody in golf right now i think that that's fine mm-hmm. not golf doesn't have to be dominated by three people the it, the entirety of the sport sometimes you can just have good golfers with technology the way it is and caddies having as much information as they have now uh, you just, anyone can really win a tournament. If you are, if you have the mental fortitude to do so and you're playing well. I think that's totally true. And I mean, gosh, we we were talking about my gambling results earlier, right. And we were talking about this before we started recording, which is just like, it feels like that kind of season like i mean it feels unlucky at times i mean it feels like we've been on guys on guys on guys and then they finally win just as we get off of them right or we sort of have it nailed in terms of what kind of archetype plays well at this tournament and then we just choose the wrong one out of a group of six you know or whatever um 
So it's been like, it, it is. And it's just because golf has so much parody. I mean, that's really like the bottom line of it. Uh, it's just that like, it's, it's, it's a great time to be a golf fan because there's so much talent out there, but it's a really tough time to be like a golf handicapper because there's so much talent out there. Um, and because it's coming from all different angles, you know, DP world tour, corn Ferry, guys playing like through on special temporary memberships. It's like, it's just, it's all sorts of people winning, you know? So it's just, it makes it really interesting, but really difficult. I mean, handicapping is a bit of luck. That's just how it goes. Shout out to both Keith Fleming and Nate Brown, who we've had on the podcast before. Their ROIs this year are incredible. So go ahead and um, find them on Twitter and follow them. Read their stuff on both We Know Fantasy and Fantasy and Frames. They both do fantasy stuff. Uh, they've been pretty incredible. You know who else has been incredible, Nate? And this has just been just facts, basically, since I've been introduced to them. That's Beard Vet Coffee. Now, listen, you go to beardvet.com. That's beardvet.com. You put in the promo code Godzilla. You're going to get 10% off any of your coffee needs, any of your beard needs. I know right now you can see, you know, I'm a little bit more clean shaven, uh, but if the beard ever comes back, they got those tinctures there for you. You can take care of your beard at beardvet.com. I love the coffee. I get the whole beans. I dump them right into my uh, coffee maker, grind them up. I've got a little beard vet um, Yeti cup that I carry around with me everywhere. I'm always, um, these, those guys are super active on social media as well. So it's a lot of fun. So go to beardvet.com. That's beardvet.com. Go get all your coffee needs. Hey, put in the chrome, promo code Godzilla. That's Godzilla, 10% off all orders. And they're going to get there in like three days. Incredible logistics as far as beardvet.com goes. So.